Hello everybody, this is David with Shelbyville Now and today we have with us Mr. Paul Engel. Paul is the founder of the Constitution Study. It's good to have you with us, Paul. Thank you, David. Good to be here. Uh, tell us about the Constitution Study, what you do, and give us some insight. So I founded the Constitution Study to help everyday Americans read and study the Constitution for themselves and to teach a rising generation to be free. Now, I did not come up with that language. It actually comes from our first Chief Justice, John Jay. He said every American, every member of the state should diligently read and study the Constitution of his country and teach the rising generation to be free. By knowing their rights, they will sooner perceive when they are violated and be the better prepared to defend and assert them. That's what I try to do. I, I try to show everybody it's not hard. You can read it. You can understand it. You certainly do not need a law degree. But most importantly, by doing that, you begin to understand what your rights are, how you can use them, and then most importantly, how you can defend and assert them. Okay, um, you have a website. It is constitutionstudy.com. Yes. Uh, you have some blogs on there. You have videos. Yes. Lots of different resources. Tell us, are you, where else are you located? I'm on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Parler, Rumble, uh, pretty much anywhere I can get the message out uh, to share. I, I, I put this information out into the public domain because I think it's important. I think it's it's information that every American needs, so I try to get everywhere I can. That's why I put so much up on the website, but there's also, like I said, there are tools. I, uh, I've published several books, um, so there's, there's books and I have classes that I put on up there. I have uh, free webinars, paid webinars, all designed to put information in your hands to help you take what we can learn from the Constitution and then use it in your everyday life. Well, uh, wouldn't it be easier just to sit back and just let the news media tell us what the Constitution says? Well, there's a problem. See, when you do that, you're trusting that the information they're giving you is accurate. Now, how do you know if that's true? The biggest problem is, I see it all the time, my wife and daughter will tell you how often I interrupt a television program because they've made some statement that just isn't true. See, now what I do is I go back to the original sources. I go back to the National Archives, and I get copies of the Constitution, the Declaration, the Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers, quotes from our Founding Fathers. I use a dictionary from Founding Father Noah Webster um, he, that he published in 1828. I'm trying to find out exactly what they said and exactly what they meant because I will pretty much guarantee you what you're being taught about the Constitution is wrong. I, I, I spent 12 years in government-run school. I learned more about the Constitution from Schoolhouse Rock, a Saturday morning <laughs> cartoon, than I did in 12 years of government-run school. And sadly, most of what I was taught in school, a lot of it was wrong. So you've gone back to the roots, and, back to the roots. and, and you are just teaching everyday people, um, giving them the resources so they can look for themselves. Yep. Instead of relying on the news media and rely on the education system and rely on other sources that are just not reliable. And, and if you notice on all of my articles, all the stuff on the website, uh, everything is quoted, all the quotes are linked. So if you are reading a quote and you think I got it wrong, you can click that link and go back and see that's where I got it from, that's your actual quote. That's awesome, checks and balances. Well, in our society today, in this country today, we are back and forth with different opinions about well, left and right, and just it's just a total chaos right now. Um, and one thing that's come up uh, recently that's, called, that's been talked on the media uh, it seems like every every time you turn the television on and go to the news channel, they're talking about this, and that's the su su Supreme Court. Uh, we lost the justice, and now the debate is whether President Trump has the authority to make his selection now or wait because it's an election year. Right. What do we have? So I have an app on my f iPhone. It's a free app. You can download it. Um, I have the Constitution right here, and we read from Article 2, Section 2, he being the president, um, uh, shall and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers and councils, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States whose appointments are not here otherwise provided for. It doesn't say he will appoint them except in the last year of his term, or you know, he'll only appoint them in months that end in R. He, he is involved in the appointments, but what's interesting, and this is what we're not taught, See, every expert I've heard online, even constitutional scholars, 
say that the president nominates, the Senate appoints. But that's not what we just read, is it? No. It says the president appoints by and with the con advice and consent of the Senate. Right? It says he does say he shall nominate and by, um, and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate appoint these people. So the president shall nominate. He doesn't have a choice. He's required to nominate a position. And he's supposed to then work by and with the, the consent, the advice and consent of the Senate, meaning the president is supposed to be working with the Senate on this appointment. Now here's what's interesting. If you understand that, then Mary Garland and uh, Barrett, the, the, the latest uh, nominee, make sense. At the end of the Obama administration, the Senate was in control of the Republicans, the opposing party. A justice died, Scalia. Right. Right. Obama wanted to appoint a justice. The advice from the Senate was, no, you're at the end of your last term, your term limited out, we'll wait till the next person comes in. He didn't listen to that advice, he nominated someone, the, the Senate simply said, no, we won't consent. Now we have a situation where Trump is in the last year of his first term. Uh, the Senate is controlled by the Republicans, his same party, and they're saying, yes, we consent, whether it's because we think you're going to win, um, you're going to be the president anyway, why wait, doesn't matter. The advice from the Senate is, if you give us a nomination, we will work on, on the consent part of it, the confirmation. So it, it's gone forward, that makes sense. And there's a couple of reasons why this is important. One is, well, one of the bad reasons is it's a political point. You know, what if Biden wins? Right? The Republicans don't want that. So this is a political move. But the other part has to do with the elections coming up. I fully expect that the presidential election in 2020 is going to be just, uh, going to end up before the Supreme Court. There's no legal reason why it should. There's no constitutional reason why it should. But our political and our, our judicial system has become so twisted and so corrupted that even though they've got no case, lawyers will bring it to the courts and they will battle and they will fight and there will be political wranglings. And if we have a evenly divided court, the Supreme Court can't make a decision. And if the Supreme Court can't make a decision, the decision rests with the last court that sees it and you know that that becomes an unsatisfying solution at least with a court of nine the court can come to a conclusion and give its opinion as to how they should proceed and it's not a now people won't accept it because of the politics of it right. but that's a different problem right okay this this makes perfect sense the way you explained uh, the obama situation and now the trump situation mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense and you won't hear that in the mainstream media. You will not hear an honest evaluation. You know, um, there's a line that Thomas Jefferson used. Uh, he said, you could, if I get it right, you would not lose any, you could not more fully destroy the freedom of the press by, by simply crushing it than you could by having it uh, print lies. Problems with the press are nothing new. Right. right. It goes all the way back to Washington, Adams, and Jefferson. And uh, basically, I don't trust the, the press, I don't trust a politician. If they told me the sky was blue, I'd go out and check. <laughs> but it does lead to something that, it, it proves that something George Washington warned us about has come to pass. And at, at his uh, farewell address, he said, The alternate domination of one faction over another, sharpened by the spirit of revenge, natural to party dissension, which in ages and countries have perpetrated the most hard enormities, is itself a frightful despotism. Can you think of a better way to describe politics in America today than the alternate domination of one faction over another, than the spirit of revenge between the parties? That's part of the reason why President Trump has moved forward with his nomination. With his nomination. It's part of the reason why we need the Supreme Court filled because no matter what happens on election day, people are going to ignore the Constitution, they're going to ignore the law, and they're going to sue. And it's going to end up before the Supreme Court, which really is sad because we're saying our, our nation is no longer run 
by we the people or the people we hire as our representatives, it's now effectively run by nine people in black robes. Hmm. Well, that's so true. Uh, Paul, I appreciate you coming and, and getting us started on this. I'd, I'd like to have you back to talk about other things if, you'd, I'd love if you to. would do that. I'd love to. I'd like actually one thing. Um, if you head to the website, constitutionstudy.com, I'm going to be announcing October 1st, I'm doing a free webinar explaining the presidential elections and the Electoral College, how the Constitution oh, wow. says they work. Well, maybe we can do that on our next show. Well, that'd be a little hard. That's going to be close to two hours. Oh, well, we won't do that. Maybe you can give us the Cliff Notes version. Or something. <laughs> we can do that. No, but but uh, go go check his website out. It's constitutionstudy.com and sign up for the what You have to sign up for the webinar? Yes, it'll okay. be October 1st. We'll be going out. If you sign up for the newsletter, um, you'll, you'll, you'll get uh, notified when that comes out, like I said, uh, which is only a couple of days. I mean, it, it, yeah, it, the, it's, October 1st will be announced, and the webinar will actually be, I think, October 24th. Awesome. All right, well, Paul, thanks again for coming. We look forward to having you on here again, and I want to say thanks to First Bank and ANS Heating and Cooling for making this show possible, and thanks for watching.